how to create an OMF file from Premiere and then open it up in Adobe Audition to do editing, higher level editing for sound. First off, you have a film, and here's a film. Motivation. 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 Madam Consell, Christian. So the point is, I have a finished film, and I want to now improve the audio process. Now, there are some limited things you can do in Premiere, which is great. But if we want more features, we need to export this out. But we want to keep the sound quality, and we want to go like this. We go to export and OMF. And OMF allows us to export out all the gobbledygook we need. And the features that you'll see here, uh, we want to basically leave this to 48,000 for the sample rate. 16-bit is fine. We could go to 24. Uh, I'll let you decide that. 24 is better quality. Uh, separate audio. Now, here's the thing. If you create one file where it's embedded together, it allows you to keep everything condensed together, so everything's c collected. If you do separate audio, you can isolate the tracks and do things. I recommend that because you may have a soundtrack, uh, the narration from the different actors, those things you might want to process differently. So I rep recommend separate audio. Uh, AIF or Broadcast Wave. Wave files work really well. AIF works really well. But I'm going to stick with Broadcast Wave. Uh, that seems to be a little bit more consistent for the industry. And then Trim Audio. What this is is that if you leave all the audio that's not part of the video clip, so you have audio that you basically would edit out in the final mix, it's not going to be there, it'll keep that in on the timeline. So if you're not sure if you want to use other audio that's there, like part of a soundtrack or something like that, you might want to keep the complete. The problem is it does make a much bigger file. Whereas if you do trim audio, it's only going to give you what you have in your finished edit. So let's leave it on trim for now. So here we go. We've got this. Oh, and one other thing. Don't go this high. I mean, if you have a really high quality film and you really love your sound quality, that's great. But I'll tell you this. The device you used to record the material did not go over the sampling rate. Just saying that you, there's nothing above this from the devices that we use in class. Including pan is nice because it has stereo. Handle frame weight, you can go bigger or smaller. This is how much on each edge of a clip you have to grab and do stuff with. I just like to leave it on the default. But if you read more about this, you can just you know come up with your own idea of what you want to do. So we click OK. And I already did this and exported it out. And what you'll see, I zoom out here. We're going to pretend that I exported it. Well, actually, that's, that's export one. And I'll go save. And you're going to see a process like this. Then it gives you an overview text file of what actually happened and all the different rates. So this data can be helpful uh, for later use. Then if I go over to the desktop and I click on OMF, I can see that there's quite a few files here that I've exported out. But I did uh, a number of different samples earlier to try to see you know, which ones I like best. So for instance, if I did complete, uh, you can... Well, you can uh, do the complete, you can trim, you can have separate audio or embedded audio. I exported each one of these out so you can see the different file size. And if I were to go up here, um, you can see that AIFF and uh, these other file sizes, these are the larger files. And let's go back to name. And I look down here, you can see the complete right here is 64 megabytes and then the trim okay you can see the different quality so there's a lot more information in the complete one um, so you know just things to think about uh, for file size and management when you have a lot of stuff going on now once we have one uh, let's go into the uh, complete separate tri let's do trim separate and we're going to open this up. So I say open with uh, Adobe Audition. And I wait for it. And it's going to look for all the dependent files. And this is interesting. I'm going to quit this. And let's go back. Normally, you just click on the OM OMF file, and we're good to go. So I'm going to go down here, and um, I'm going to do separate. And I'm going to try this again. If I double click on it, it's going to automatically go to audition. Uh, separate audio trim, user desktop. Um, what I'm looking for is linked to media. It can't find one of these files. 
And so right here it's saying, where is this file? And so if I go in here, I should be able to find that file. Um, and you can see here all this stuff. Now this, I'm glad this is happening because I want you to see how this works. A2, uh, OF73, it looks like that's 10. And I click open. And there we go, we found it. So file management is such a huge deal with audio and video production. It's keeping track of where things are. And you'll notice that I had created a folder to put all the audio samples into so that they're all in one place. So that if, if the software can't find something, you can go back to that folder and, and hunt around and find it, and it can work. So now... Motivation. 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 I have the audio here, and I can then isolate each one and work on all the different parameters I have in addition to accentuate the audio, improve the quality, clean things up, and whatnot. And then I could export this back out and put it back as part of my main clip, our main film. And that is the tutorial.